to a moving past your past. And if I will use as a subtopic on this uh, evening, I want to talk simply from two words. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, move on. That's what I want to talk about tonight, move on. I want to start by suggesting that without realizing it, we often carry something around with us everywhere we go. We bring it out in our conversation. It shows up in our attitudes. And whether that thing is from the past or even from the present, it holds a power over our lives. Here it is. All you have to do is listen to people talk throughout the day and take a note of where their conversations are grounded. You will hear those conversations that are grounded in things of the future, in things of the present, and certainly in things of the past. And sadly, when you do a survey of these conversations, most of them are rooted in things of the past. And as we talked about in brief on Sunday, Paul gives us uh, this encouragement in Philippians chapter 3 uh, for us not to stay stagnated and stuck in our past. He says in Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 to 13, not as though as I have already attained, either whether already perfect, but I follow after it that I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind in reaching forth unto those things which are before. We find in the scripture a few lessons that Paul teaches us about moving forward. The first lesson that Paul teaches us about moving forward is that you ought to be dissatisfied with the position that you're in. Uh, he says, he says, if you look at it again in verse 12, not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has also laid hold of me. Paul was saved and Paul was sanctified. But when you digest this scripture, you will find that Paul was not satisfied. Because even though this, uh, uh, he, he walked with God, he had a dynamic prayer life. He was winning people to Jesus right and left and even right in inspired scriptures that will go into the Bible, he still was not satisfied. There was so much room for improvement in his life. And as much as he had grown in the Lord, there was still a lot of growing in the Lord to do. And please understand that there are two dangers that we face, one with our past and one with our present. Let me say it again because somebody will catch that. that there's two dangers that we face. One with our past and one with our present that we must avoid if we want to move on in life. We must avoid living in the past. But here it is. We must also avoid resting in our present. If anyone could have rested on the law, so to speak, Paul could have. Uh, he had seen the risen Lord. He had visited heaven. He was known as the world's greatest preacher, missionary, church planner, and soul winner. Yet, he said, I am still not what I ought to be. And may I pose to you a question tonight? Are you perfect enough to know that you're not that perfect? Or are you put together uh, another way? Are you mature enough to realize that you really are not mature enough? Because one of the things that made Paul such a great man is he was more concerned about his character than he was concerned about his reputation. I need to help somebody here tonight because you need to understand that your reputation is what other people think about you. But your character is what God knows you are. 
Can I say it again? Somebody ought to catch this tonight. Your reputation is what other people think about you. But when you got character, character is connected with a relationship with God. So although people may think one thing about you, when you have a character that is godly, it is connected to the things of God, and it doesn't matter what people think about you because your character speaks volumes of you. Here it is. Here it is. The reason why Paul was so successful is because he never thought of himself as being successful. Here it is. Paul was so full of God because he was so empty of himself. And I believe that is the problem with this dispensation of time and this dispensation of church is many of us are full of everything, but we're not full of God. And that's why every time I walk through the doors of church, every time I come, every time I have intimate time with God, I'm asking the Lord to fill me up, not with more stuff, but more of his spirit. Am I talking to anybody here tonight that says, listen, the reality of it, I don't need another thing, but I need more of God. I, I don't need a new house, don't need a new car, don't need another materialistic thing. But the thing I need more of is I need more of his power. I need more of his presence. I need more of his spirit. Uh, because there's times that I get weak in my life uh, and I need God's power. There's times I get a little lonely in my car and my house won't make me happy. But can I tell you there's one thing that will give me joy, unspeakable joy, and that's the power of the Holy Ghost. But can I tell you what the Holy Ghost would do the Holy Ghost will make you smile when you feel like crying. The Holy Ghost will make you lift your hands when you feel like having a pity party. The Holy Ghost will make you give him praise when it seems like you're falling under. That's why you got to have a divine connection with the power of God. I dare somebody look at your neighbor and tell me you don't need another thing. Matter of fact, you got too much now. Huh? What you need is you need another dose of his spirit. Matter of fact, you need another touch from him. I know you've been touch one time but somebody said I don't mind a second touch from God here we go he says it says he 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 was not he was not successful because uh because he thought of himself to be successful I know we have this, I said it before, I said it again. I know we have this big ploy uh, that is going on now in this generation, in this dispensation of time where everyone want to be big and everybody want to be successful. But can I help you? You can't be bigger than God. Let me say it again. I said you can't be bigger than God because if I can remind you, he's the one who blesses us with what we have. He's the one that the Bible says supplies all of our needs uh, according to his riches and glory. He's the one that when we are down, picks us up. He's the one that when we are out, he brings us in. So we can never be uh, bigger than God. So I don't care how many conferences you go to, how many books you read, the only knowledge that you can gain and true knowledge is knowledge from the Holy Ghost. Uh, can I tell you what it is? It's when you don't know the way the Holy Ghost will give you a direction. When you don't know where to go and how, the Holy Ghost will give you a path and direction. In all thy ways a knowledge and he shall, he shall direct your path. Please understand, I am convinced that the average person never understand that success is not a destination. It is, here it is, it is a never-ending process. Uh, one great Christian put it this way, success is not determined by what we are, but rather by what we com are compared to what we could be. It is not measured by what we have done, but rather by what we have done compared to what we could have done. In other words, the first step to moving on with your life is to never be satisfied where you are. I know that you feel, some of us feel that we already arrived because God has blessed us with a new house, a new car, some letters behind your name. But I'm not talking to those folks. I'm talking to the folks on tonight that says every day the Lord wakes me up, I need more of him. That I'm not satisfied with the place I am in God. Uh, that the reason I pray the way I pray is because I'm not satisfied with my prayer life. Uh, the reason I open his word is because I want a continuous understanding of his word. Uh, the, re continue, I, the reason I continue to show up and get his word on in the inside of me is because I want to grow more in him. Somebody shout, I'm not satisfied where I am. 
There it is. And so, and so Paul encouraged us to be dissatisfied with our position. But then he also encourages us in the text to be delivered from our past. He says it in verse 13. Look what he says, brethren. I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Here it is. Paul had learned a tremendous lesson that you can't focus on where you are going until you forget where you've been. Y'all missed that tonight. Here it is. Can I say it again? You can't focus on where you're going until you forget where you have been. You remember last week I talked about, I talked about this past Sunday, I talked about, uh, in essence, the Christian life is like a race. Uh, you, you would notice carefully that Paul, he uses athletic language in all of this passage. The words press on, reaching forward, goal, and prize are all racing terms. It's athletic language. Uh, Paul uses this language. To, in other words, the Christian life is a race. And as you run your race, remember two things. Where you have been is not important, but where you are and where you're heading to is. Uh, you, you will never sail the ship of your life into the seas of the future with peace and a joy if your anchor is stuck in the mud of your past. You cannot for, run forward if you're always looking backward. Uh, Winston Churchill once made a statement. He says, if the present quarrels with the past, uh, there can be no future. Paul was determined not to let his past hinder his present or hurt his future. You see, there were several things that Paul had to forget. Here it is. He had to forget past guilt. Paul was a murderer, a blasphemer, a persecutor of the church. The deep scar of sin was embedded in his heart. He had to forget past grief. Paul had suffered terribly. He had been beaten, the Bible says, shipwrecked. He was scorned, left for dead, alienated, ostracized by his family. He had to forget past glory. As far as the church was concerned, Paul was the toast of the town. He was a spiritual superstar, but he had to forget all of that. He had to forget past grudges. Here it is. Paul had been mistreated, betrayed, lied on, lied about, sold out by his family and friends. And he had to forget all those things if he was going to serve God and move forward. I want you to listen carefully tonight because I'm trying to help somebody while helping myself. Some of you are going to have to clean out the skeletons in your closet and forget your past failures if you're going to move on with God. You need now, now, please don't misunderstand me on tonight. That word forget does not mean that we fail to remember. There is no way you can ever erase the past totally from your memory. In the Bible, when we see this word forget, it means no longer to be influenced or affected by. And when God says in his word, I will remember your sinfulness no more, it doesn't mean that God all of a sudden comes up with bad memory or amnesia. What it means is God will no longer allow our sins to affect our relationship with him. In other words, what he does is he extends grace and mercy. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, I'm reading out the New International Version, he says, but God demonstrated his love for us in this uh, that while we were sinners Christ died for us uh, in other words he loves us so much that even in our mess in our mess ups he reaches down to where we are he picks us up he cleans us off and he says if you don't remember what you've done I don't remember it either and while everybody else tried to put your past and your mistakes up in your face God said I have already washed it under the blood uh, I need to talk to about 10 folks in the building that is still being haunted by something that has happened years ago. And God says, I have delivered you from it. I have forgiven you 
you from it. Uh, I have released you from it. Uh, and God says you no longer have to carry the baggage uh, into the next season. Uh, because the last time I checked in the word of God, uh, it says for who the son has set free. Uh, preach in this house. Watch it. Uh, you are free indeed. Uh, I need somebody in the house that know they walking in the spirit of freedom. Uh, and can tell every demon in, in, in your past and let them know uh, that God has released me from it. Uh, I know I did some things that I'm not proud of. Uh, I know there's been times I looked in the mirror uh, and I felt like giving up on my own self. Uh, I know I disappointed some people along the way. Uh, but when I have connected with God uh, and when I was saved, sanctified uh, and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, he put something on the inside of me uh, to let me know that there's some things in my life uh, that I could just brush off my shoulder and every time the enemy tried to remind me uh, of where I was uh, I remind the enemy of where I'm going uh. to go what the